So my name is Kate O'Connor. I'm Executive Chair of Animation UK. Uh, Animation UK is still relatively new to the world of trade bodies, which is four years old now. We were set up officially as part of the UK Screen Alliance. And this is an alliance covering animation companies, but also it had previously represented the VFX post-production and wider facilities sector. Um, and before Animation uh, UK came under the umbrella of the UK Screen Alliance, we were a more informal campaigning body, um, achieving the tax breaks almost a decade ago, which was totally game changing for the sector. So uh, I just want to do a minute on why we need Animation UK as other people join the session for the main focus um, with the voice of the animation industry. We are the only body to represent the unique interests of the animation industry. We advocate on behalf of you. We help stimulate the business context for studios, for production companies, for service providers and distributors. Uh, and we work across film, TV, advertising and corporate communications. We're around all the right tables, we're pushing on all fronts and we're gonna get the support the sector needs to thrive. And I certainly don't need to tell this audience um, that the animation sector is an incredible uh, industry, creative, innovative, drawing on craft and technical e excellence and creative talent right across the UK. We're creating new worlds, developing new characters, and our content is for all demographics and all genres. We're not put in a box. Um, and our production companies are not all just about co content. I mean, we're all aiming to attract global audiences. We pitch to global commissioners. We have content that travels well, transcends cultural um, barriers and language. So licensing, merchandising and other assets are all about the business of animation, a huge, huge and growing global business. So in other words, we not only have to think internationally, exploring co-productions, pitching to investors around the world, but we really have to bottom out what our export strategy is, how we are going to seek to get our content and all our assets out there um, in that global marketplace. So I am truly delighted to introduce this session uh, this afternoon. It's the first in a series of business related sessions that Animation UK and the UK Screen Alliance will be running. Today is all about exports and we are so, so lucky to have Justine Bannister as an experienced creative facilitator for sure and media and animation consultant uh, to run this session. Uh, we've got that supported by some brilliant um, industry friends, veterans, if I can say, who can talk of their lived experience uh, in exporting and in the markets. Um, and in just one minute, Justin, I will stop talking and Justin will introduce the session and take us through some key modules explaining and illustrating the topics such as marketing and pitching and attending uh, those uh, events and markets around the globe. But I just want to say, I really have to say, we've given Justine such an impossible task. She has been asked to get such rich um, and you know, hugely valuable information down into a relatively short session. I know if anyone can do it, Justine can. Um, and I know many of you know Justine and she certainly knows her staff, but I also want to say that we will be packaging all of these nuggets of wisdom, the intel, the links into a toolkit. Um, and that will be accessible, downloadable and available on our website um, after this event um, and all good bookshops near you too. Um, now, this has only been possible, the event and the toolkit, because of the funding and support that we've received from the Department for International Trade. And I personally want to thank the DOT team, that's Neil Semple, that's Ross Lewis and John Durkin, for their help in securing this funding and the help we've received over the years. But guys, actually, I really want to thank you in anticipation for the even further support that we're going to receive in the years ahead, because our sector is poised for growth and exporting as part of that growth agenda. And it's with great pleasure that I can introduce Tony Humphreys, who's here today to represent the DIT. But actually, Tony's a consultant, 
Um, many of you all have met him because he pops up across the world. He's got decades of industry experience in deal making. He knows his way around the markets of the world and the DIT office, and he's going to contribute uh, this afternoon. And also, he's going to help us with his colleagues at the DIT make sure the toolkit contains all the right links and emails and offers from, from the Department for International Trade. So I'm now going to hand over to our fantastic industry guests, in addition to Tony, Natalie Llewellyn from Jellyfish Originals and Andrew Baker from Cantilever Media. They are both brilliant. They have been so generous with their time. Um, but I want to let them introduce themselves and also talk a bit about their company so you get a bit of uh, context from where they speak. Um, and then um, Andrew will hand the baton on to Justine, who will explain how the session will work. So I'll pop up at the end. I'll be taking notes. I'll be looking at your questions. And I really hope you have a fantastic afternoon. I'm sure you will. See you later. And over to Natalie. Thanks, Kate. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, lovely to be part of this panel this afternoon. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself first of all. I'm Natalie Llewellyn. I'm Managing Director of Jellyfish Originals. That's the kids' um, original content division of Jellyfish Pictures. Jellyfish Pictures is a leading visual effects and animation studio based in London. We're up to a capacity of about 300 people at the moment due to the fact we've just delivered our first animated feature film, Spirit, for DreamWorks Animation, but we've also um, well-renowned for other children's entertainment brands such as Bits and Bob, Dennis and Nasher, and most recently How to Train Your Dra Dragon Homecoming. My role as MD of Jellyfish Originals is very much um, across a four pillar approach. Um, as much as anything, it's all about curating and nurturing and developing and originating original IP, uh, which we take from grassroots all the way through from script to screen. Um, but we also um, uh, fully across a certain amount of distribution, international distribution. So we oversee all of that key distribution strategy in early stage pre buys and anchor commissioning. Um, and then we always are very mindful from a very, very early stage in any of the concepts that we develop um, to be thinking about that commercial exploitation and a potential CP rollout, if we're lucky enough to get to that point. Um, and then there's also a wider um, service element, I suppose, that comes underneath the originals banner. So we um, we also do under originals full script screen service, which is on a buyout service basis, but it's a guardianship that comes under my own remit. So lots of stuff going on, lots of new projects in development and an ex exciting time for us at Jellyfish and over to Andrew. Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Baker. I'm a Managing Director of Cantilever Media. Uh, we are a UK-based production company uh, focusing principally on animation uh, and live action for a family audience in both TV and in film. Uh, we are currently in production on our first animated feature film. Uh, which is called The Amazing Morris and is based on a Terry Pratchett book. Uh, and we are uh, aiming to deliver that sometime next year. Um, and uh, we're also currently in development on an animated series called Cupoodle 5, which is a, a reboot of the original brand, uh, which uh, we're aiming to make as a co-production with Canada. Uh, and uh, I guess those two projects are some really good examples of how you can do a co-production and the different kind of structures and the issues involved. Um, and uh, I, today, I'm, I guess I'm just bringing my, uh, my producer hat to uh, give you some suggestions as to how I've managed to do things. But also my background is uh, in legal and business affairs. I was head of business affairs at ITV Kids. And so uh, some of the structural and legal uh, issues are also things that I can uh, uh, help uh, explain a little bit in terms of this uh, this seminar generally. Um, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to enjoying the rest of the seminar. So um, over to Justine. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Natalie. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you to Animation UK for this wonderful invitation. A little bit nerve wracking as well, as there's so much to fit into this session. And we'll be looking at things in a very global way and we'll be providing you with a toolkit if you want it after the session 
uh, probably towards the end of the month. Um, for those of you who haven't met before, hi there. Um, uh, I'm a children's media specialist, as Kate said. I have my own consultancy, so Just Be is just me, unless I'm working with other partners. Um, I work with producers and organisations on sourcing projects for potential investment, co-productions, rights exploitation, and also the development, funding, financing of projects and platforms, and one-to-one -one coaching for creatives and producers. My background is quite eclectic and spans development, production, acquisitions, distribution, co-production, post-production, talent, scouting, marketing and press. Um, we've been having a look at the attendee list today and you will have a very diverse um, experience and expertise. It's going to be very difficult for us to address any, any of you individually. So this is a very top of line introduction and overview. And I hope for those of you who are more experienced, you'll get something out of it. Um, also, for those who attended the CMC uh, Kids Screen Prep session, that you might recognize a couple of slides. So enough about me and let's on to the structure of our presentation. Thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so today our session will cover in very broad strokes a number of topics that I consider as essential in preparing for the international marketplace. And I'll be calling upon the expertise of Natalie and Andrew to intervene in certain places. Um, at the end of each module, we'll answer a question or perhaps two that you um, can send via the Q&A function, and, which Kate mentioned before. And we may have enough time at the end of the session to have a more general q and I'm especially happy to have Natalie and Andrew here because they can both talk to animated series and features and how we can put together the money, finance them and take them to the international marketplace. The modules are split as follows. Uh, groundwork is about preparation and rate research we recommend that you undertake before taking your projects to market. Um, the animation landscape is about the evolving universe, technology, the emergence and dominance of the SVODs and the AVODs, consum consumption and trend spotting. Finding the right partners is thinking strategically about the appropriate studios, distributors, platforms, networks, and or commissioning broadcasters and how to find them. Developing an export strategy, identifying the key players and key territories. And this is where Natalie and Andrew will provide a short case study each on working with China and Canada respectively. Next slide, please. So in this section, we'll look at preparing for the international marketplace and what you need to consider before pitching a project. Um, how you present yourselves to the international market and the questions that investors will have about you as individuals and companies, your property or project, whether a series or a feature, and thinking brand and, and protecting your IP. Your core value checklist is all about your IP when reviewing and preparing your property and also prepping your pitch. And your audience, who's it for and is your property or your IP appropriate to that, to that audience? Next slide, please. So when I refer to investors, I mean producers, partner studios, distributors, SVODs and even AVOD platforms, broadcasters, licensing agents, et cetera, et cetera. As you know, investors are kind of crucial in order to finance your project and they, along with regional, national, potentially European funding, if you have a European partner, tax credits and studio partners are the way to make that happen. So considering how important they are in putting it all together, you'll need to put yourself in their shoes. If you don't already have a solid working relationship, with any um, with an investor, um, then the questions listed um, are those that they'll probably be running through their mind, and they'll be wanting to know mm. about you um, in in your first encounter. Um, this these these are the person you're pitching to. Um, have you answered these questions? The bottom line is basically what makes your you and your project stand out from the crowd? And have you reassured your potential investor that you can deliver on that promise? Investors are notoriously risk adverse, but they're all looking for a next big hit or something that's that really does stand out. You don't necessarily need a pre-existing brand or a publishing success or whatever, but you do have to convince them it's going to be potentially the next one or that it has something truly special. And they will also be asking if they can afford you. Next slide, please. So this is maybe an area where Andrew and Natalie could, could, um, could say something as well. Um, who your IP belongs to is perhaps a super obvious question to you, but proof of ownership and the underlying rights are not secure. If they're not secured from the get-go, then this can create a whole world of problems further down the line. And it can also prevent you from making the show or the feature or end up with a lawsuit. 
If it's an adaptation of a book or pre-existing work, then the rights need to be optioned and for long enough, for a long enough period so you can put the financing together, produce and deliver. Um, if that hasn't been taken care of, then this can create a whole world of problems. Um, if, if this is your own creation or an in-house IP, then have you secured the copyright? Once you've secured the underlying rights and are convinced of financing, then take a look at domain names for your property and at least in your home territory. If you have a brand, then you'll need a website. Think about apps, think about games and the timing on this. What's your view on that, Natalie or Andrew? Do you have anything to input there? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, it's really important to, to have the, um, the chain of title agreed right at the start. Um, you know, you need to know who's been involved in that project. If, if you haven't taken it from inception to where it is now and someone else has brought it to you, you need to know who's been involved, that everyone's been bought out, where it's come from. Um, essentially, that's the foundation of your whole project. And if there's something wrong with it, the whole project crumbles and falls. And um, uh, if you're looking at a project that will have licensing potential, then it's also really important to, to think about the IP very early on. Um, you know, what is the title of the show? Is that something you can protect? Um, and, and even down to things like, um, I mean, you mentioned domain names, but also the social media um, extensions, whether that's, a, a, you know, YouTube or whether it's Facebook or Pinterest or, um, uh, you know, any of the many social media things, it's really, really important because if you announce your series or your film and you haven't registered all of those, uh, then you might find someone else has registered them for you um, uh, in a very unhelpful way. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's really just about forethought and just planning and making sure that you cover all the bases, but it is absolutely vital. Okay, thank you, Andrew. And of course, none of us have a crystal ball, do we? But long term planning and vision is really super important. Does your property have licensing, publishing, gaming potential? If so, have you secured all of this exploitation? So unless you've just won the lottery or you have a fairy godmother, uh, then you'll need financing partners and you'll have to be prepared to divide the pie, the share. We'll talk about the business of animation and different funding models later, but sharing equity and you'll sometimes have to compromise on creative control. Notably, if this is your first show or feature, then you may have to compromise more than more experienced producers in order to get it made. Next slide, please. So this is all about brass tacks, your property, your IP, the essentials and getting ready to pitch. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think you need me to read it through. Um, although just one thing on that, if, if you do run through the list with your project in mind, this could help you put together your logline, which is your two to three sentence verbal pitch to head up your meetings. I, I definitely recommend trying it. It's really useful and it's a very useful exercise. Next slide, please. So who is it for? <laughs> yes. If your design, story, characters and dialogues are not age appropriate, then you'll have to redevelop the property or rethink it. It's best to get the target right the first time around, as you often only get one shot with a broadcaster investor and you will expect it to be to know about target age groups. Um, they're generally split across young children, so not three, a preschool, upper preschool, the five to eight year old magical bridging target between preschool and kids. And kids are considered as six to nine year olds, six to 10 year olds. And then there were kids, girl skewing, boy skewing, all girl skewing, yet not boy toxic, gender neutral, which I hate. And then you have tweens, the eight to 12 year olds, preteens and teens, young adults, family, kids and family for co-viewing and adults. Um, try to avoid using any kind of terminology that says six to 60 or for all ages, unless it's a family movie, of course. It just doesn't work. Broadcasters, investors really need to know what the core target is and will often use terms like sweet spot and the core and really want to know exactly who this is for. Um, when they describe their own platform audience and more traditional broadcasters will need to know where they can put it in the schedule and where it will fit in their lineup. Another bad example of target age groups is two to 10. A two year old and 10 year old is worlds apart, as you know, and a 10 year old is a 10 year old still watching animation, maybe secretly, with younger siblings, but would they rather be seen to be watching The Voice, or reality shows, or Gogglebox, or something else? Next slide, please. So traditional TV, although the emergence of SWOTS has been absolutely huge, um, it's still the home of favourite brands and shows, and family co-viewing is super important to broadcasters. Platforms and networks are still more trusted by 
parents than AVODs and SVODs for the time being. Favourite brands and favourite shows generally tend to coincide worldwide. And we all know about the power of brand builders and retailers and globalisation and the, the, the monsters of that. The brilliant ones are Disney, of course. Kids and young adults find what they want regardless of where it is or how they access it. So the concept of platform loyalty is disappearing or already has done. Uh, kids, tweens and teens really just want to have a laugh, don't we all? But they all are aware of their world and they feel responsible about it and for it. Uh, mobile consumption is exploding. It has exploded. Games, apps, TV shows and app spend is on the rise. Mobile gaming is growing. And not just kids, but everybody loves fun, kooky and even flawed characters that they can relate to. It's very important. We'll look at that when we're talking about trend spotting later. So the full export toolkit, which you'll receive, will provide stats on favorite brands worldwide, favorite themes, genres, and favorite platforms. Next slide, please. Your competition. So you don't need to look too far from home to find incredible shows and features that perform really well internationally. Um, to give you an idea of the production uh, or the quality of production coming out of the UK, for example, you can, um, you'll find a link to the show reel for UK attendees at uh, this year's kids screen. And, and I would definitely check out the, the attendees and see what, see what your peers are making in the UK. Um, sign up for international trade newsletters. I'd suggest Animation Magazine, Kids Screen Magazine, C20 More Media, just for starters. And I find that Cartoon Brew is a ter terrific source of info on who's doing what and where. Do you have any others to add on that list, Natalie, maybe? I think that's pretty thorough. I mean, TBI Kids is great. TV Kids, World Screen. Um, I mean, there's many, um, but certainly keeping a daily um, insight into what everyone's doing is critical. Okay, and also checking out sessions. I mean, you probably recommend that as well, Natalie, signing up for sessions uh, within the markets, yeah. uh, online markets. Animation UK do a huge amount of sessions. I mean, for me, um, uh, Animated Women UK is brilliant because there's a huge amount of panels and social events and information on that front. And then also, I think, also critically to markets. If you can, it's really important to go to the panel events at markets and some of the sessions and not just speed date your way through a nine to a six with potential partners and actually just have an opportunity if you can to sit back and just listen to what's going on in the marketplace and just that can often generate um, business leads as much as anything else. Absolutely and I think the 30 minute sessions that they have a kids screen or the share with so in Annecy are a terrific way to listen to what platforms and broadcasters are looking for, how they like to be approached, what's working on their platforms and gives you incredible insight and intel and Absolutely. and finding a way forward and also watching animation super inspiring there's there's so much to there's so much to see in all different age groups and targets and it will be taken for granted i don't know if you had this experience natalie and andrew is when when you're talking to investors or when you're pitching a show they'll often say this reminds me of this looks like and so you have to know your stuff you have to have a lot of background information and and know your shows right Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when I had small kids, it was easy because you're in that preschool space the whole time. And then as they grow up, so you do need to make time in your own schedule to sit and watch cartoons. I mean, it's no hardship. So it's a fun thing to do. You just need to make sure that you carve it out because you don't want to be in a scenario where someone's saying this reminds me a little bit of this. And if you don't know what your competitors are doing and what the competitive shows are, then you're going to be at a disadvantage. So I think it's really, really important to do your research and to know what you might be pitted against. Okay, perfect. Well, that brings us to the the end of that first module on groundwork. So if you could just say, that, do we have any questions from anybody in the Q&A function? I don't think so. Could you show the next slide? That would be great to so round it off. Thank you. So it's a lot of work. It's not rocket science. There's just a lot to be done, like researching your competition, investors, what they're looking for, making sure that your, your property or whatever you're pitching is appropriate to the audience, also appropriate to your investor. And, and knowing about your competition. 